Hello, all you subjects of the internet out there. This is the A Romantic Shipper back again with yet another video. This time we are going to be talking about Dangan Ronpa. So I'm not really a gamer. I haven't played any video games besides Minecraft and Clash of Clans for years. However, I do spend a lot of time on the internet. And during my time on the internet, I was introduced to the Danganronpa franchise, initially entirely through its memes, because let's be real, this has got to be one of the most memeable franchises in existence. This boat's okay, you know. It's not terrible, it's not great, it's just okay. In some ways, that's the worst kind of boat. It's boring. Someone help me. Here, let me show you some pics of my yacht. You haven't seen a great yacht until you've seen my yacht. Where's my iPhone? Look at this pristine baby. I call her the SS Koizumi. And God, is she wonderful. Are you jealous? I think you're jealous. Don't you see? I love motherfucking boats. Boats, 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 boats. But stepping beyond the memes for a second, the more and more I actually learned about the franchise, the more interesting it became to me. And I wanted to find out more stuff about it. Danganronpa has a pretty interesting and grabbing concept. All three of the games are essentially this sci-fi murder mystery thriller where 16 teenagers are trapped in an isolated location and forced to kill each other by a mysterious mastermind to have any hope of escaping. With that said, like I said before, I'm not a gamer, so I wasn't just going to buy the games myself and dedicate a ton of my time to getting through all of them. And I wasn't planning on watching the anime either, since it doesn't even cover the content from the second and third games, and also most people agree that the games are better. So yeah, I've really only ever experienced the Danganronpa franchise through Let's Plays on the internet, which I guess makes me not a true fan or whatever, because I haven't actually played the games. But you know what? I really like the story and have a great love for the franchise, and I consider myself a fan, so yeah, how about that? I mean, the Danganronpa games are just a really good story. It's just incredibly interesting watching these quirky, messed up, super high school level talents be thrown into a room together to try and survive each other. I mean, sure, the games kind of do get more ridiculous as they go on, but I would still say that each volume is very entertaining and suspenseful in its own right to play through. Or at least watch other people play through in my case, with volume 2 probably being my personal favorite. However, with all that being said, the games are hardly perfect and have quite a few flaws. One thing that many people have pointed out while playing the games is that there are often seems to be that one trial in each of the uh, six in each games that really doesn't work very well and is usually hated by most people in the fan base. For me personally, I see those trials as the fifth trial in volume one, the third trial in volume two, and the sixth trial in volume three. All of these cases have some pretty significant issues, and in keeping with the theme of my channel of doing rewrite videos, I'm going to be embarking on a three-part video series where I go through each of the three Danganronpa games and try to see if I can rewrite my least favorite trial from each one as best I can. And also, since the Danganronpa trials don't just happen in a vacuum, I'm also probably going to have to be changing things around for other parts of the story in each game as well to make my rewrites more cohesive. But anyway, with all that out of the way, let's just get to it and get to talking about how Trial 5 of Danganronpa Volume 1, The Murder of Mukuro Ikusaba, could have been rewritten. So, I actually think the build-up for this trial is really good. It's very mysterious just seeing a dead body appear out of nowhere wearing the mask of the person who attacked Makoto, with Kyoko just being missing, and then it turns out that the victim was actually the mysterious 16th student that we've been looking for the whole time, Mukuro Ikusaba. The main problem with this case is how it ends up being resolved. There's that really weird alternate ending that isn't used again for any of the other games where if Kyoko is executed, everyone is just trapped in the school forever, Toko is dead for some reason, and everyone ends up in a polyamorous relationship with Aoi, I guess? I mean, and then there's the other true outcome where Makoto ends up being sentenced to death but ends up being saved by luck, falls down a trash compactor to safety, Star Wars style, or at least I think that's what happens. I mean, I honestly don't know since for some reason that cutscene and the, that cutscene specifically is like the only one of the Danganronpa franchise that's copyrighted and not able to be shown on YouTube. Either way, the outcome is very unsatisfying. And the worst part about the Trial 5 is that the Mastermind just straight up disregards their own rules in order to win, which is just really cheap. The showcase of a truly cunning and intelligent villain would be to work within the rules that they have already set up to get what they want. But of course, if the mastermind did do that, then all the students would just end up dying because of the rule that voting 
for the wrong person to get punished ends in everyone except the killer being punished. Thus, in order to rewrite this trial, I am actually going to have to change one overarching rule for the whole game, and it's a change that I actually think would greatly improve a lot of elements of the story. Not just this trial. When the students vote for the wrong person to be punished, only the person they vote to be punished will be executed. The killer will go free, but the rest of the students will remain. This would be a much more sensible rule in my opinion, as it would mirror in real life how sometimes people are executed for crimes they didn't commit, and the everyone dies rule doesn't really make any sense in the context of the mastermind's plan, as they want to draw out the despair from the students and wouldn't want to risk them all just dying. It would also give more personal responsibility to the characters for their choices. With the original rules, in order to escape, a student would have to end up sacrificing literally everyone except themselves, and be the only one making it out alive. And maybe it's just me, but I feel like a lot of the students wouldn't be willing to just let everyone die in order to escape. By changing the original rule, the killer could still take solace in the fact that other students could still escape after they do, which would help them in justifying their actions, and it would also mean that the decision to escape is much more personal, as they must specifically choose both the person that they kill and the person that will be executed if they frame them, meaning Leon Kawada in the first trial would have to be consciously choosing to let Makoto die. This rule change would also ironically add more tension to the trials. With the original rule in place, the player is pretty confident that they are not going to get the murderer wrong, because if they do, the game is just over. But if only the wrongfully accused person would be executed, this gives some genuine tension as the player might really choose to condemn the wrong person, and the killer would go free. This would actually serve to make the second case of Danganronpa Volume 1 even better. With this rule in place, rather than Byakuya just framing Toko for murder for the shits and giggles, he would actually be doing it because he was legitimately trying to get Toko wrongfully executed, because he didn't want to be in danger of getting killed by Genocide Jack, and he didn't care if Mondo got to escape, if it meant that he could get rid of her, establishing Byakuya as even more ruthless than originally, as he would be willing to manipulate the rules of the game to his advantage without straight up murdering anyone himself. Also, the fourth trial would make more sense, as rather than just randomly trying to kill everyone, Aoi would first try to take out the two people who were being terrible to Sakura, Toko and Yasuhiro, and not Makoto or Kyoko who didn't really do anything, before finally trying to take out herself because of her depression. Hell, this rule change could even make the third trial make a bit more sense too, as Hifumi may have disliked Yasuhiro and Kiyotaka, but I highly doubt he would have been okay with just letting everyone else die, and instead he would have simply planned with Celeste to help her murder Kiyotaka and frame Yasuhiro so she could escape and he would get to stay in the school with Alter Ego, being of course double-crossed by Celeste and getting murdered himself later. Really changing this one simple rule and changing the stakes of the trials would have a net positive effect on pretty much all the trials in the first game, and even future games as well. Now, there is of course a caveat to this alteration, which is that the fifth trial of the second game would make absolutely no sense without this rule in place. But that could easily be corrected for by simply having Monokuma create a motive for Nagito to go along with the information he already learned about the ultimate despairs, promising that if the wrong suspect was killed, then everyone except the killer would die. And since this would be an exception to the normal rules, this would make the trial feel extra special. But back to the main point of what this video is actually supposed to be talking about. My alteration to the rules would have by far the biggest impact on how the fifth trial in the first game plays out in my rewrite. Unlike in the other trials, where some stuff is recontextualized, but the result is ultimately the same. Things start off the same as originally in the fifth trial, with the students finding the body of Mukuro Ikusaba. When it actually gets to the trial, however, things start to diverge. It is quickly ruled out that Byakuya, Yasuhiro, Toko, or Ai could, done, could have done it, leaving Makoto and Kyoko as the only viable suspects, and there seems to be legitimate evidence for either one of them committing the murder. As the audience, we of course know Makoto didn't do it, though that sense of protagonist's safety would of course be challenged by the time of Danganronpa v3, but Kyoko keeps insisting on the fact that it wasn't her. In the end, the evidence is inconclusive, but with the clock counting down and the students not knowing who to pick, Byakuya once again makes use of the altered rules I introduced, just like in the second trial, and basically tells Kyoko that it doesn't even matter if she is the murderer, because even if she is, she did it because she was trying to stop the mastermind and didn't kill any of the main group members, 
and she will be more useful to help everyone escape, whether she is let out of the game for getting away with her crime or is staying in the game from being innocent, than Makoto would be. So, Byakuya proclaims that Makoto simply needs to be sacrificed for the greater good, whether or not he actually committed the murder. Kyoko keeps insisting on that it wasn't her, however, and seems to be legitimately convinced that Makoto did it. And then, with the clock getting close to zero, the voting commences, and Makoto, in a panic over losing his life, ends up voting Kyoko to be punished. And when the scores are tallied, there are three votes to execute Kyoko, and two votes to execute Makoto, which means that Kyoko has been sentenced to death. Byakuya is obviously pissed at the outcome and questions who would dare vote against his orders. Toko, of course, voted with her master Byakuya for Makoto, but Aoi and Yasuhiro voted for Kyoko, as they are simply much closer to Makoto and have been moved by his epic hope speeches, while they are still distrustful of Kyoko, who has just been off on her own this whole time. The only student of the six who didn't vote was Kyoko herself, who just couldn't bring herself to vote Makoto, even though she knew she might die, and she is incredibly disappointed at Makoto for voting her. And Makoto is also angry at himself for doing so, questioning how he could possibly do that. And this time, there is no alternate ending shit or unsatisfying cop-out where Makoto survives by sheer luck. I mean, I know he is the ultimate lucky student and all, but unlike with Nagito, whose luck actually seemed to be a legitimate superpower and had real consistent effects, Makoto's lucky talent never really showed itself outside of that moment where he was about to be executed. So I'm honestly just going to cut it out and have Makoto winning the raffle be the extent of his luck. Instead, there is only one true conclusion to the fifth trial in my rewrite, and it ends with Kyoko's death. Yes, that's right, I'm actually killing off Kyoko in my rewrite. And I know Kyoko stands are go going to crucify me, but hear me out. The first three cases in Danganronpa Volume 1 have some pretty shocking and heartbreaking deaths. But then for the last three cases, there is very much an element of tension missing. Sakura wasn't actually murdered, she killed herself voluntarily, and Mukuru Ikosaba and Junko Enoshima were both villain deaths, which means none of the protagonists actually die in the last two cases. I think it would have been a great writing decision to have one more character death before getting into the final trial, showing how the hope and optimism shown after trial 4 was turned into complete despair by the mastermind. And Kyoko dying would arguably be the saddest and most shocking death in the game, since her character had been around so long and she seemed so untouchable. And it would also make Makoto's character more interesting, as he would have to grapple with the fact that while he was trying to encourage everyone to press on and not lose hope, he was the deciding vote in sentencing his friend and possible waifu to death. Which would make his decision to hold on to hope and leaves Hope's Peak Academy in the end even more powerful, showing how despair can give rise to even greater hope, as Nagito would be fond of saying. After Kyoko is pronounced guilty in the trial, she basically comes clean about what her past is and her ultimate detective talent that she uncovered from her buried memories, and what she has been doing while off on her own in the school the whole time, unlike how in the original game she reveals that stuff to Makoto later. She regrets the way she acted around everyone, remarking on how her decision to not share her actions and bond with the other students led them to mistrusting her and ultimately to her downfall, but she tells the other students that they still need to carry on and solve the mystery she was trying to solve, and escape Hope's Peak Academy together. Then Monokuma, of course, reveals that for the first time in the trial so far, the students guessed wrong, and Kyoko is not the murderer, and neither is Makoto, and in fact none of the six students are the murderers. Keeping with the rules of the game, the mastermind honestly reveals the murder of Mukuro Ikosaba was the mastermind themselves the true 16th student hiding within the school. The six students are shocked at the fact that the mastermind was actually a student and wonder who it could possibly be, as Kyoko was sure that Mukuro was the 16th student and wonder if there are actually 17 students. However, Monokuma assures them that there have only ever been 16 students participating in the killing game since it first started. And now with Kyoko being wrongly convicted, they have won the killing game. Try as they might, the students simply can't figure out the answers to Monokuma's riddles, and they have to watch while Kyoko is crushed to death in front of their eyes. Or actually being burnt alive under a giant magnifying glass might have been a more fitting end to the ultimate detective. With Kyoko now dead, it means that the five remaining students would have to work even harder to uncover the mystery of what's really going on, without Ko Kyoko's super detective powers to aid them anymore. And in the same vein of making things harder for the protagonist, Genocide Jack should not just be used to basically reveal the most awful event in human history, and she would just have her memories wiped like Toko. 
I know Kyoko does make another appearance in Danganronpa Volume 2, but honestly, it would it would have been possible to write her out of there. I mean, they managed to write out Aoi, Yasuhiro, and Toko, so why not her? Anyway, after Kyoko is executed by Monokuma, he says that although the Mastermind has won the killing game, they don't want it to stop, and they are choosing to remain in the school to keep the killing game going, even though they could escape if they wanted. They just wanted to use Mukuru Ikosaba's corpse to take out one of the two biggest threats to them first, Kyoko with her super detective powers and Makoto with his lull hope speeches, thus explaining why they planted evidence for the murder pointing e equally to both suspects. And as motivation for the next murder, the mastermind says that if someone doesn't murder again, then they will use their second and last murder that they still have to kill one of them themselves, which puts all the students on edge. As I said before, I'm really trying to use the rules of the game consistently in the story, as I feel like the killing game is more entertaining when it feels like there's consistent logic to it that even the villain is following. However, this threat to the students is actually what ends up blowing open the entire mystery of who the Mastermind is. Later, while they are eating lunch together, Makoto remarks on how strange it is that the Mastermind threatened to use their second and last murder on one of them, because they had technically already murdered two people, Muguru Ikosaba and Junko Enoshima before. Instantly, a light bulb flickers on in Byakuya's head as he considers the possibility of Junko's corpse and Mukuro's corpse being one and the same, and then he challenges Monokuma, saying that if he really is a student participating in the killing game, a trial must be held for his earlier victim, Junko Enoshima, just like with Mukuro, and reluctantly, Monokuma agrees, with Byakuya even agreeing to volunteer for punishment if they guess the mastermind wrong this time, giving an actual resolution to his character arc of not being a complete asshole anymore. Makoto and Byakuya, and not Kyoko, are the main investigators, and this of course leads to the final trial where the five remaining students are able to piece together that Junko was really Mukuro disguised as Junko the entire time, and the real Junko was the mastermind working from the shadows, and so she finally reveals herself and the final confrontation plays out like how it did originally. And alright, that is pretty much it. That is how I would have personally rewritten the fifth trial of the Danganronpa Volume 1 to make it more in interesting and satisfying. As I said before, this is not really a holistic rewrite of the entire game, as that would be a video that would go on forever. I just wanted to share my thoughts on how I think the worst part of the first game could have been written better. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you want me to continue this series for my least favorite trials in Danganronpa Volumes 2 and 3? Well, it doesn't really matter because the scripts are already being prepared for them at this very moment. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed. This has been the Aromantic Shipper. Be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, and always remember, just because you can't feel love doesn't mean you shouldn't want other people to. Bye!